In this project, we're going to create this part called a bearing. For my construction technique, I immediately noticed that the center points of the circles that make up this part are going to be my prime sketch points. The outside circle has a diameter of 100, the inside circle 70, and the distance between the circle centers that make up each end is 140 millimeters. And I'm going to start a new sketch. This is in millimeters. I'll use the top plane and right click view normal to the sketch plane. Because this is based on circles, I'm going to use a center point circle make that first circle coincident to the origin of my sketch plane and the outside diameter was 100. I'll make my second circle for the inner hole here and use the same coincident point for the center. This has a diameter of 70. Now there's another circle that makes the end down here. I'm going to use a projected line from that origin. Notice the yellow line there. I'm going to click for this circle center and just choose a random size and escape. Now I know that the distance between the circle centers is 140, so I'm going to use my dimension tool and from the center of this circle to the center of this circle, I'm going to set that distance at 140 millimeters. And the circle, it's 100 on this side. This one is the same. I'm going to use an equal constraint to make the diameter of this circle equal to the diameter of this circle. Next, I'll add lines between the two circles using my line tool. I really want these to be tangent, but I'm going to accept a coincident as that lights up. Hold the mouse button down to draw a single line creating a coincident between these two circles. I'll do the same down here. Coincident this circle and the line is coincident to this circle. Escape the line and now I'm going to add a tangent constraint between the line and the circle and this line and the circle here and do the same down below. And I can see those uh, have snapped into place. Now I don't really need this inner part of the circle so I'll use my trim tool and trim that out so it doesn't get in the way of creating the slot. Now I have a slot sketch tool and it's listed under offset so if I go up here to offset I can see slot listed there and slot requires that I have a center line established for creating the slot. So I need to create a center line. I'll get my line tool and choose construction. I'll use the starting point. I'll snap to the center point of this end circle and stretch that out horizontal. The distance here is going to be 70 millimeters. I'll add that from the keyboard and then end my line command. With that established, I'll go up, click on offset, choose the option for a slot and it wants me to choose the center line for the slot and here it gives me a diameter. I'm going to double click. It is a 25 millimeter diameter. Hit enter, hit enter again and now I have created that slot. With that my sketch is finished. I'm going to right click, confirm the sketch, Right click, chain, choose isometric. I'll choose the extrude feature from my toolbar. This will be a new, a new feature. I'm going to choose profiles. First this profile with the slot and then this end down here with the circle. It has a depth of 20 millimeters. It is a blind end type. Uh, I'll hit enter and I can see what that looks like and I'll accept that. And I have to add to uh, this feature the, the boss that sticks up. This boss sticks up a total of 60. Now the sketch I can't see because it was consumed with that last feature, but I can turn the visibility of the sketch one back on. Choose extrude again and for my profile I'm going to look down here on my sketch 
and I can choose uh, that particular part of my sketch again. This is also going to be blind, but it has a total height of 60. I'll hit enter to see what that's going to look like. And that looks correct. Now I want to make sure that I've hit add. So I'm adding this to my part. I'll choose to accept that. And that creates my part. Lastly, I'll turn this sketch off by clicking on the little eyeball to turn that sketch off. 